Hi, my name is Travis Lindsay. I'm a professor of entrepreneurship at Cal State Fullerton, a manager uh, at our CSUF startup incubator and a co-founder of an investment fund called Titan Angels. And with me today is uh, Freddie Sherman, one of our uh, 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 residents at our incubator. And I just wanted to have a little bit of a conversation with them. So uh, Freddie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey man, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. So I'm a, a creative director and a, basically a serial entrepreneur. I've started many businesses and worked with many startups over the years, really thoroughly enjoy it. Um, but as far as uh, being a creative director, I eat, drink and sleep graphic design and marketing. If, you know, if I see a piece, a design piece, I've recreated it in my mind. If I see a call to action that's not working, I've figured out a better one. Um, my mind always works that way. So I'm in the right business. So I, you know, I, just, I just constantly like to keep um, you know, being involved in the creative world. So what, what, what was it that creativity that really, you know, pushed you into becoming an entrepreneur or, or what, what, what all was it? Well, you know, that's, that's a big part of it. I've uh, worked for many big companies. I created programs from companies like AT&T, PepsiCo, Mattel, you name it, um, be, as part of many big teams. Um, but the problem is with being a creative person like I am, I constantly see where there's issues, things that can be done better. How can I improve the system? How can we improve a workflow? And, you know, when, if you're part of a, a big corporate team, you don't always have that freedom to actually take that initiative to do what you want to improve situations. So as being an entrepreneur, I had that full capability. If I have a product idea or service idea, I can take it to market and I can be very nimble and very agile. And I don't really have to worry so much about uh, making mistakes. I'm just more worried about creating something new and better, you know, you know, just kind of going for it. Yeah, no, I was I was having a conversation with my or it was part of my lecture anyways, uh, last week in one of my classes about all the different reasons to become an entrepreneur. And that definitely is one of the, the freedom of it, being able to be your own boss and do what you what, what you think is right and what you know is right. And so uh, but with that, I mean, are there any negatives like what, what was the most unexpected thing about running your business was or were there any negatives, really? Well, I wouldn't say negative so much, but. I've been doing this for a very long time now. So it's going on a couple of decades. Um, but the one thing that really surprised me is the, is the, is the work hours or there is no off, right? Uh, there is no day off or time off. I mean, there is, but you still always going to have um, something to work on or some opportunity to try to, um, try to, to flesh out. So I just, I guess what really surprised me is that when you work for yourself, you work a lot more than you think <laughs> you, know, yeah. you do. But at the same time though, because I'm doing what I love and I'm, and I'm really passionate about what I'm doing. It never feels like work. So I guess the main thing, the unexpected thing was you got to learn how to manage your time effectively so you don't burn yourself out and that you still have time for family and friends, right? And for the first couple of years, it was fine. My wife was totally fine with it. We're working along, we're doing everything. But at one point I realized we haven't had a vacation. We haven't, I haven't really had a, a day off. So I had this manage the personal life like business in a way, schedule it. We're going to go out this weekend. We're going to take the kids to the beach. We're going to, those are on the calendar to make sure I don't forget about that part. So I guess, I, I guess basically what it winds up being is I love doing what I'm doing so much that I forget to take time off for myself. But um, I've learned, I've learned to work with that. Well, yeah, and one of the things I see with like creative people uh, that are entrepreneurs that go out and do and uh, go into business for themselves is that burnout is a, is something that's real, and mm -hmm. I think the big reason for that is that you just have so many ideas, right? There, there, there's not enough time in the day to to get to you know a fraction of them, a small fraction of them. Absolutely. So, yeah. So uh, managing <laughs> your time is is critical, no matter yeah. what kind of entrepreneur you are. Mm -hmm. uh, so. That's good. So you, you, you've been going on uh, vacations? Yeah, you know, um, now what we do is I, we do, well, before COVID, now it's yeah. a totally different story now, right. but before COVID, um, we would basically do a lot of mini vacations, like little staycations, but we do those like every three months and we do something pretty significant every year. Uh, we, I, we went on our very first cruise about two and a half, maybe three years ago. Since then we've gone on like six cruises. So it's like, it's like, if we got the time to do it, um, reward yourself, you know? And also too, I found that when I'm taking more time off, I'm getting more and more creative, more productive when I'm back at work, because I'm meeting new people, I'm seeing new ideas, I'm getting my, you know, the, the, the whole flow and the idea of creative brainstorming starts to really come and sing, it start, really starts to work uh, when I'm actually out of my environment. So I really enjoy doing that, getting out there and just seeing what, what the world has to offer, you know, and just in a relaxing setting and it just helps me. When I get back, I'm, I, I'm full of ideas once I get back to the table. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I totally get that. And I, I think part of the problem there, or part, part of the reason why that is, is because, I mean, if you don't take any time off, you never take a step back. You never are able to look at your business and what you do from a different perspective, right? So Absolutely. if you take a little bit of time off, go on a cruise to Alaska or the Mediterranean or the Caribbean mm -hmm. or Mexico, uh, it gives you time to think about things in a different context. And that's helpful, I think. Absolutely. I, I found some of my best uh, business contacts when I was relaxing. I was on vacation. Like I would go to trade shows specifically to get sales leads and I'd get some, you know, and I you now close some deals. But um, it's just so funny how I'm in a different headspace when I'm actually just meet someone, maybe at, who knows, maybe I'm gambling in Vegas, maybe I'm poolside or at the spa, get going to spoo, at the spa. Someone asks me, what do you do? I tell them, hey, this is what I do. And we start striking up a conversation. Next thing you know, it's a business lead or a partnership or who knows what. So I'm open to it, even though even though since we're taking time off, I'm always open to it. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. So uh, now going back to business, uh, you you help people with uh, the creative side with their online presence. What's the first thing that you do with the with your new clients? How, how do you help them build their online presence? Yeah. So that's it. Really, kind of depends. It's kind of different with every client, but I will say one thing for sure. So today, building websites. It's not as complicated as it used to be. It's not as expensive as it used to be. I mean, so a lot of people see it as a commodity. And I think that's the mistake. They need to remember that, yes, maybe you could have, you know, your relative or whoever, anybody you know, somebody off of Fiverr, who know, who knows what, build a website. That's not the magic of the system. The, the real important thing is, what is the website doing? How is it engaging people? What's the purpose of the website? Um, and people forget about that. They just think, oh, you know, it's just a brochure. Is it? Maybe it is. So the first thing I do is I interview the client and find out what's important to them. You know, find out what their sales funnel looks like. Is this a impulse buy site or is it something where we potentially could be looking at a lead generation component? Is, you know, it's that kind of a thing. We basically have to interview them and find out what's the purpose of the site as it pertains to their unique selling proposition. Once we figure that out, then it's, it's basically a lot more straightforward. Basically clients will sometimes say, I just want a website, tell people we're all about and a contact us page. Well, maybe that's not the case. Maybe what we need is a lead generation page with a, a really nice lead magnet to build an email list to market to customers down the line. Or maybe it's a, a very, very specific call to action. Maybe they wanna get people to um, give them input on them what their product or service is. Depending on the startup, you know, you never know what it is, but they really need to be thinking about what is the action the visitors need to take when they come to our website, as opposed to just reading about us and going away. Cause that really does, no one anything, that doesn't do anyone any good at all. Um, so that's the thing, I just have to ask people, you know, be very, very honest with themselves about when people come to the website, what do they expect them to do? And don't be afraid to ask them to do what those things are. Um, a lot of times people just assume that it'll happen without a call to action, but it never will. People will just look at your website, read it and go, okay, that was cool and close, the, <laughs> close their browser. <laughs> right, yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I get off my cousin, you know, go build me a, a website on uh, uh, with WordPress or whatever. And it just it, it'll look great. But it, if it doesn't convert, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's sort of like having the cousin. It's like a Model T and then have it wor working with somebody like you. It's sort of like a Tesla. It's like yep, a exactly because exactly. one of the things we look at, you know, uh, customers are quite often surprised when we look at the uh, level of discovery. When we look at all the details, like we ask them about the customer, typical customer, customer journey, a lot of times they don't know what that is. They have no idea what that journey looks like. Um, so we ask them for things like a persona, a customer persona. What does your typical customer look like? And a lot of times they don't know what that is. So we go through this entire discovery process where we learn about what their ideal customer or client is, yeah. where we see them today, who they are typically, where they would be three months from now in the sales funnel, where they would be uh, six months from now, or maybe it's an impulse buy and they're buying today or whatever the case may be. Another thing that clients forget about is retargeting or tracking for digital, digital marketing. We run digital marketing campaigns for clients all the time. And a lot of cl uh, clients are not really aware of how that all works. So we educate them on that. But part of the education process is finding out again, what that customer journey looks like, what an ideal customer journey looks like. And then we help them implement. Right. Yeah. So, no. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so I, I, I'm just to reiterate this point. I mean, I, I think so many people think of a website as sort of like a one and done sort of thing. You, you build it and then you're, you, you build it once you're done. You don't have to do anything else, but there's really so much more that's involved in it. And if you're building sure. the website just to build a website, great. You can have somebody on Fiverr do that. But if the whole point is to get people to take action, which I mean, you're a business, 
Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to do. Uh, then I mean, you, you've got to you've got to do more than that. You got to actually think about what the customer, who the customer is, what they want, what motivates them, and so going through that process, figuring all that stuff out. I mean, that's just an ongoing thing. And, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and one of the things that um, uh, I think a lot of, uh, especially like first time entrepreneurs, overlook is that their their customers do change. They they evolve over time, and so it's it's not like okay, we work with Freddie for six months, we're going to build this awesome website that's kick ass and it's going to convert forever more. Uh, no, I mean, you, you've, you've got to update it. You've, you've got to keep mm -hmm. working at it. You've got to keep under or knowing and kind of re getting to know your customers over time. Absolutely. It's a lot like, um, like, like you said, um, sometimes people look at websites, like almost like a brochure, like a digital mm -hmm. brochure, it's done, but it's really much more like an app or a piece of software where there's yeah. iterations and it has to develop and evolve with it really that customer journey defines that evolution. And that's the one component that people tend to forget about. Um, once the site's launched, it's gonna be different six months from now and it needs to be. The habits will change once you get your data back by using Google Analytics to see how people are using the site. We look at heat mapping to find out what pages people are looking at and they're sticking to. Uh, we even know things like if they're mousing over things but not clicking them, right? Why, why did they do that? What's that behavior telling us, right? So we will do A, B, C, um, split tests to see what works better. And over time, you, you get a better web experience that converts the way you expect it to and you need it to for your business to survive or thrive. So um, that's that's uh, that's basically the landscape of it. So uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, you were a, uh, well, are, you, you will always be a client of the CSUF Startup Incubator. Once you're part of the family, you're, 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 never, you're never excommunicated. It's sort of like Hotel California. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. You can never leave. <laughs> no, you, you can't. You, you, you may want to, Freddie, but you can't. You're, you're here forever. So, what what was your spirit? What, what was your experience like uh, with us at the CSUF Startup Incubator? I gotta say, it's it's fantastic. I've been looking at this particular incubator for a while now. Um, I've gone to some of those meetings um, on the campus with a few different business partners uh, over the past couple of years, um, and the circumstances were just right to work on it with my current partner Hassan. And I'm so glad we did. I mean, like I said before, I'm a kind of a serial entrepreneur. I've worked in a lot of startups. I've been had a lot of business partners. Um, some projects were, were great. Some didn't work so well. But sometimes you're not really sure why something hit and something else didn't. Um, I think the beautiful, beautiful thing about the incubator is I'm learning the whys. Like looking back at some of the projects that didn't work so, so well, I, I can totally see why they failed now. I can see what steps we didn't do. Uh, I think the great thing, the beautiful thing about the incubator is that you get so much support, so much education, and so much, uh, I guess, direction. You know, sometimes, even though you're an entrepreneur and you have a general sense of what will sell, doesn't necessarily mean you really know how to build the next business. Doesn't mean it doesn't necessarily mean you have all the resources or all the pieces in place. And you guys do provide that, and and it's just great. I mean, I love working. Our, our mentor is fantastic. I mean, he was handpicked specifically for us based on experience and expertise and great guy. I, I hope to work with him going into the future until I'm you know, no longer working. Um, just, just fantastic. I mean, um, I, all I can say is now we're a lot further along in the development of this particular business than we ever would have been without you guys. So this is, this is fantastic. And I would recommend it to anybody, anybody who's developing or building a business um, and you're not really sure how to get it going, um, they really should look into this because once they see the resources available, like the student team, the mentors, the advisors, I mean, it's, 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 you can't even like, you can't even like put value on, like put a number on the value that you get from this. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I liken it to like a professional athlete who has a coach or has multiple mm -hmm. coaches. I mean, there, there's always more to learn. There's always different things that you can refine and do better, do differently. And having somebody else there who, uh, it has that ability to take that step back and look at things dispassionately uh, mm -hmm. is really helpful. And I, I think that's one of the big things because there's a, uh, one of the traps that entrepreneurs can fall into is that they just fall too much maybe in love with a specific idea or a specific way of doing things. And so mm -hmm. having somebody around either, you know, like us or you that can look at things dispassionately and say, hey, this is, uh, this is a different way to do it. Let's try this. Let's see how this works. Uh, I think is very valuable. 
So, uh, so you, you would recommend the incubator. Uh, that's good to know. Uh, is, is there anything else that you would like to share? I mean, I, I, I teach a class of, uh, I, uh, of young entrepreneurs, students at Cal State Fullerton, uh, all about starting a business. Like what, what would you say to them? What would you say to your 20 year old self, Freddie, about entrepreneurship? I think anyone's interested in being an entrepreneur, I, I couldn't recommend it enough. I mean, it's just the way that I see the world <laughs> It's the way I like to operate. And so I kind of, I'm kind of biased towards it. But I think uh, like if I could look back at a young me, for example, I would just show them all the, the, the things that I've learned and all the resources that are available, make them available to them. I mean, like, you know, um, like the paths we've taken in this, in the, in this particular incubator, you know? Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, sir. And uh, where, where can people find you? Yes, I am at, uh, my name is uh, Fred Sherman. I'm at shermanartcreative.com. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook and all that. But yeah, shermanartcreative.com is the best place. Perfect. Thank you very much, Freddie. I'll, uh, I'll see you around. And uh, thanks for doing the interview with, with me. You bet. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.